1980, Bruce Springsteen gave a gift unto the world, and that gift, a double album as they were called in those days, was titled The River. From the very first note that played as the needle hit the record and the ties that bind blasted out of the speakers, an iconic album was born. It's been over 35 years since The River's release, yet Bruce and his E Street Band are back on the road playing The River cover to cover, just as it was released in 1980 to packed out arenas all around the world. In fact, Springsteen is bringing the River Tour back to Manhattan on Monday. It's a makeup show of sorts, as the blizzard that hit the metro area back in January wiped out that day. Perhaps no longer the kid he was at 31 when his songs about connections and responsibilities and the compromises of adult life took us all by storm. All grown up now and 66 years old, Bruce is just as passionate about his music and his message as he was back when the river was released. And the question is simple. How is it possible for a 35-year-old album to still be able to sell out Madison Square Garden? Joining me now to discuss just that is Peter Ames Carlin, the author of the New York Times bestseller, Bruce, the first biography in 25 years to be written with the full cooperation of Bruce Springsteen himself. Peter, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you with us here. Well, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. You have had some great success as a writer, focusing on some other iconic music figures, the Beach Boys, also taking a look at Paul McCartney. Uh, when you got started on this project, were you a Springsteen fan, or were you looking at this simply as a writer? Oh, my God. No, I was a huge fan. <laughs> I mean, I saw Bruce, uh, you know, I grew up in Seattle, so there wasn't that kind of Bruce like mania going on like there had been on the East Coast for quite some time uh, and so uh, in 1978 you know I was aware of who he was and, and I bought Darkness on the Edge of Town and it just sort of knocked me out so when he came around a few months later I went to that show and it was one of those you know spin your head around type of experiences because I you know I was a kid that saw a lot of arena rock in the 70s and uh, you know when Bruce came out to play his show I would heard he was going to be good but there was something just extraordinary about the show, the, the, the emotional intensity uh, just throughout the three hours or whatever it was. And it just, it, you know, it really sort of opened up a whole new frontier of, of what seemed to be possible in my eyes to, you know, in music and in art and just in, you know, living as a grown up. I mentioned to you when you and I were talking before this that I am also an enormous Bruce Springsteen fan. Uh, my wife and I have been to probably 10 or 15 concerts. We took our children when they were younger. They now go on their own as they're 33 and 29. So it, we're a, a Springsteen family, if you will. And, and I met him a few times. Um, mm -hmm. My question to you is, what was your reaction to the, the, Bruce when you met him? This is a guy you would idolize and you had followed, and now you're actually sitting down talking to him. What was your reaction? Well, you know, I had heard from his friends and colleagues over the months before that happened that they said, the thing about Bruce is he's exactly who you think he is, you know, <laughs> and that was kind of, that was kind of right. I mean, I, I had a pretty realistic, I think, uh, expectation, you know, that this, he's, he's a guy, right? He's an enormously talented guy, but he's just a guy. And, and he's pretty much exactly that. And you can see, you know, we, it was kind of odd because we just met, but we very quickly began to get into these very deeply personal sort of, you know, difficult memories. And so I would, we would speak in very intimate terms for, you know, an hour or two or three or whatever. And uh, then we'd sort of get up and it'd just be like, we were sort of back to being just kind of professional <laughs> acquaintances. Uh, but I, you know, I found him to be enormously, you know, smart and funny and charismatic and, and dark and a little angry at times. And, uh, you know, he's, he's pretty much exactly what you, you know, if you listen to his records, he's pretty much exactly who that guy is. Mm -hmm. And somebody who has, has chronicled him and his music now, mm -hmm. how can you explain, do you think, four decades of this extraordinary success, not only hanging on to fans like me, but bringing mm -hmm. in brand new fans, young people that, that, that weren't even around when he broke into the music world. How do you explain that? Well, his music, I think, is so tied into the emotional experience of being a person, growing up and falling in love and breaking up and and trying to figure out who you are, not only to yourself, but within the context of this larger and not always very kind uh, society that we live in. Um, and coming to terms with, with what you are 
capable of doing and what you're not capable of doing. And I think that speaks to people, you know, in the same way that, like, I never cared at all about cars, except as a place to get from point A to point B. But in the voices of his characters, you know, you begin to realize the deep significance, you know, <laughs> what a uh, 305 Chevy with a 396, right? I got that right, wrong, I'm sure. 58, 50, I can't remember. How That's close very... enough. That's close enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, there's something powerful about that, that image, you know? And people, I think, just connect to that. I think also, he's one of those guys who, uh, particularly, it's like, you know, some of the stuff that he says may be a little squirrely from time to time, but every word that he sings is the truth. And I think that resonates with people. People hear that and, and they feel his commitment, and I think that's moving. Well, once again, the book is called Bruce. It's just a marvelous look at this musical icon, uh, Peter Ames Carlin. Peter, thank you so much for spending some time with us, sharing your thoughts of, about Bruce. I'll, I'll probably bump into you at a concert sometime soon. Oh, sure. <laughs> That'd be fun. You be well. Take care. All right. You too, Jack. Tonight, tonight, the strip's just bright. I want to blow them off in my first heat. Funding for the